Hey, hey, and welcome to the Work Smarter, Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, a.k.a. The Design Ninja. And this is the place where you can develop your ninja skills with Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign and more. In this movie, what we're going to do is take another look at charts and create a segmented donut chart like the one you see before you. And this is in response to a comment on one of the earlier infographic skills videos. How do you put gaps in between the segments? And of course, you're going to want to keep that data live. So let's find out how we can do that. Now, I'm going to start on a brand new artboard here. So if I just make my way down to this new artboard inside the same document, and I'll create a pie chart to begin with. So I'll go over to my charting tools. Quickest way there is to tap J. That gets you the column graph tool and then long press on that and come down to the pie graph tool here and then drag out an area for the graph. I'm just gonna hold down shift just to make sure it constrains. It should do anyway and I get a graph like so. So let's put some arbitrary data inside of here. We'll just do three for now. So let's do 20 and 30 and 50 there like so, and apply that data. That's all fine. I'll close the data window, and now I'm gonna move this into the center of my document. It just makes it easier to work with, and you can see that guide there showing me that I'm in the middle of the document here and into the center of the document like so. So if I just drag that across, you can see there we are. It says center there like so. If you're not seeing that, turn on your smart guides, command U or control U or go to the view menu if you want to do it the uh, long way around or if you can't do it any other way and choose smart guides there like so. Okay, let's drop some color on these. So I've got a few different colors here that I'm going to use. Let's have a bit of green over this side. Some really strong uh, magenta color there and let's have a yellow color there and what I also want to do here uh, while my graph is still selected is I'm going to kill off those black strokes quickest way to do that glancing at my toolbox I can see that fill is in the front it's showing me a question marks they're all different and stroke is in back so I'm just going to tap x to bring stroke to the front hit the slash key and that's it the strokes have all gone so now it's nice and neat and tidy like so Okay, so the first thing we can do here is exactly the same as creating the donut chart uh, that was done in the original infographics movie uh, on this channel. And that's done with a couple of ellipses. So again, smart guides helping me out, going to the center there, holding down shift and alt together or option if you've got that on your keyboard instead of alt and just dragging out was like so, release the mouse button, then release the keys. That bit's really, really important. Okay, and I'm going to deselect that, shift command A, shift control A if you're on a PC. Once again, you're gonna go back to the center and alt drag out a copy of that like so. Another way you can actually do this, just so you know, if I select the initial ellipse that I made just there, is to go to the objects menu, come down to path and then choose offset path. And this is kind of handy really because it doesn't involve any extra drawing or messing around. Just drop this down into minus numbers like so. So I'm gonna make mine about that wide, okay? And hit okay. And it creates you a duplicate of the original path. So I'm gonna select those two things together. I already had one selected. So I've got my selection tool active, V if you need to do that quickly. Hold down shift, select the other one, okay, and then do command eight, okay? Control eight on the PC to turn those into a compound path. Groovy, we are halfway there. Okay, next involves the line tool. So what I'm going to do is hit backslash on my keyboard, come down to the center here, and click and drag upwards to about the edge of the graph there like so, holding down shift there to keep that perfectly straight and then release the mouse button, release the shift key. And now let's add some weight to that. So I'm just gonna dial in a value of 20 here, that's what I want. And because the stroke is drawn over the actual vectors exactly on the middle, I know that I've got 10 points either side there. That is handy information to have. It's gonna zoom in on that to make it a bit easier for you to see. Okay, now the next bit 
is a bit fiddly. You might not understand exactly why I'm doing this immediately, but bear with me because there is a point to this. First of all, I'm going to outline that stroke because I'm going to need to create another sort of compound shape in a minute. So I need that to be outlined. So object, path, and outline stroke just there. Turns it into a shape. Next, you've got two choices. You can either get the pen tool and do what I'm going to do, or you can go to the object menu, down to path, and choose the add anchor points option from there. And that will add you a couple of points that you're not going to use, but it will add you points directly in the middle. But I tap P here to get the pen tool. I'm gonna to go to the middle just there, the smart guide helping me out. And you can see that because this path is selected, I've got the add point icon. I'm just gonna click there like so to add a point at the top, right down to the bottom and do that just there. Okay, so now I've got those two points. Tap A on your keyboard to get the direct selection tool. Come up to the center point at the top, click on it to select it, and then nudge it down with your arrow keys like so. Okay, once you've done that, go down to the bottom of the shape you just made, click once to select maybe the leftmost point or the rightmost, doesn't matter which side you start, hold down the shift key and click on the opposite corner. Okay, so of the three points on the bottom there, I've got the two on the outside selected and then use your up arrow to move those up like so because you really do want a pointer just here. Okay, so it sticks to the center. Groovy. Now in a moment, you're going to see exactly why we've done that, because it will make it easier to align it up to the strokes or the, the lines really that denote the segments just here. So I'm gonna tap V to get my selection tool first of all, and just for safety, because I've got a point selected, just gonna click away and then click back on that shape like so. Now I'm going to tap R that gets me the rotate tool. I'm gonna to come down to this bottom point and then the smart guide if I can zoom in uh, a bit for you, actually, it's gonna be really difficult because I haven't set it up on this machine, different machine to the one I usually use. But you can see there, hopefully, that it's saying anchor, okay, just as I'm over that. And what I'm gonna do is hold down the Alt or Option key and click, and that does two things. It sets where the rotation is going to occur from, and you want it to be directly from that anchor point, and then it opens up the rotate dialog. I'm gonna turn preview on, and then I'm gonna use the down arrow here, and you can hold shift if you wanna make it go quicker, to rotate that around about that point. And now hopefully you can see why I've got that little nick in at the end there, because it makes it easy for me to line that up to that segment. I'm going to hit copy, and that creates me a duplicate of that original line. Let's just zoom out a bit more. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do Command D, that would be Control D on the PC to repeat that transformation. And then I'm going to Alt click again on that anchor point, okay? Because I just need to change the number of degrees that that is rotated by so it matches up with the other line. Great stuff. Okay, and I can hit Copy again. Okay, and actually I've got too many now. I needn't have hit Copy, silly me, but anyway, not to worry. Now I've got those things zoom out a little bit just so it's easier for you to see. We're nearly done by the way. I'm going to click on any one of those and then I'm going to choose select same fill color and that will select all of those things. Once I've done that I'm going to get the pathfinder. Okay so that's command shift F9 on the Macintosh, control shift F9 on the PC uh, if you've got the F keys enabled, if not window and down to pathfinder like so. Now, the next bit of information is gain, as all of these things are, really important. We need to subtract those top shapes from that compound path. But we need to do it so they remain editable. And the way you can do that, and hopefully you can see it in the tooltip here, is to Alt or Option click that icon. So the visual result is exactly what we're after, but the shapes are still there. So I'm just gonna hold down Alt, and click, and you can see, hey presto, I've now got those three different segments. Well, the next bit is really simple. Select both the chart and 
your new compound path or compound shape that you've created here. And then do Command 7 or Control 7, and that's it. They're now clipped to that shape. So if something happens like the data changing, then all you've got to do is move these things around. So let me demonstrate that. I'm going to go to the Layers panel, and you'll see that if I twirl open Layer 1 here, OK, I've got that clipping group just there. OK, and inside of there, I've got the actual graph. Ignore the other stuff, because that's down on the bottom artboard, the other artboard in this document. But if I click here in the proxy region, you can see it's selected this graph, which means I can then right click, OK, and choose data from there. So here's my original data. So let's mix this up a little bit. Make, let's make this uh, 27.5. Uh, let's make this one 22.5 and let's make this one 30 and this one 20 because now there's new data. We have to separate the thing out to four. OK, cool. Let's hit apply. So first off, that's going to look like it's all gone a bit wrong and it's a big job of work, but it actually isn't that difficult to deal with. Now, the colors have disappeared because it doesn't know how to recolor these segments. So if you want to, and just for your own comfort, we can go along and recolor those segments. Don't worry about that joiny bit just there. I'm just going to choose some colors here just to get these colored up like so. Okay, so I'll just pull another color into the top there. Just to make it easier for you to see what's happening here, what I'm going to do is create a new window for this. And sometimes this is a helpful thing to do. Right, because you get two different views of the same thing. I'm then going to come up to the application bar at the top of the screen. In Windows, this is in a slightly different place, but you'll be able to find it next to the rocket and the stock and bridge icons here. And I'm going to choose two up, like so. So now I'll get two views here, and I can just change my individual views by clicking in that window to make it active. So with this one, I'm going to do Command Y or Control Y so I can see the outlines. And if I click into this one and drag that into place, you can see the preview. OK, so what I need to do now is to get into this group and change a few things here. So I'm going to use my group selection tool, which lives underneath the direct selection tool. And I'm going to click on this first shape because I can get down into that group. And you can see it's selected there also. I'm going to tap R to get the rotation tool and then alt click on that bottom anchor point and then I'm just going to adjust that till it's in the right place as it is just about now hit OK for that and I'll repeat that for this segment over here so if I just get this one just a second so with my group selection tool I'll grab this one because remember I need an additional division over here, well, that's easy. So tap R again to get the rotate tool. Alt click on that point, wind that up to where it needs to be. So this, I'm just basically holding down the uh, down arrow on my keyboard to wind this around so you can see it moving. And now I'll nudge that into place. And this time I'm going to hit copy because it still creates part of the same compound. And there you go. You can see that that is achieving exactly that effect. And because those strokes are in the middle, the representations of the segment is still in proportion for the whole graph. And if I just drag something behind it or create something behind it, so I'll just send that to the back. There you go. So you can see that it has indeed created everything. And that is as everything is, as far as practical, in the work smarter, not harder dojo, completely editable. There are problem solved. So we're done for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Reach out to me via Twitter or Facebook. Those details coming up in just a moment. Please do spread the word. Keep on watching. And until next time, see ya.